people a couple of minutes to get in and uh, and then we'll start talking about what we're doing here. So I'm going to cruise on over to the channel and take a look. All right. So you should now see what's up on the screen is a deck builder app. Do you see it? All right. Oh, we see, yeah, we, we see it on the stream. We don't. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll see it in the stream, but you won't see it like uh, uh, through Zoom or anything like that. Yeah, so, so we're good here on the stream. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah. we should just do it so she. Uh, yeah. You know, so she can see the other screen. Is that? No, no, no. This is this is good. We'll just do it through the stream because uh, if we share it through Zoom, we might have a little bit of a problem. So. Okay. So but she should be looking at the stream as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when we're looking at this, de this will be your deck right here. So what we have. So you'll see as I'm starting to add stuff, like, for example, you know, if I add a Nissa or something like that, it will, um, it'll come up on the screen here. You'll see me scrolling and stuff. All right. So I think people are starting to show up. Let's talk about what we're doing here. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Medina. Um, I'm a um, longtime magic writer and uh, deck brewer. So uh, I think I'll just leave it at that. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Dana? Yeah. Hi, I'm Dana Fisher. Um, you might see me at Magic Fests, um, more on the west coast of the United States. All right. And hi, I'm Adam, Dana's dad, right here <laughs> next to her, and I'll be in the chat if anyone has questions. All right. So, um, so today we're going to be building an Oathbreaker deck, and uh, Oathbreaker is a singleton format. It's kind of taken after commander a little bit so uh, it uses the command zone in the command zone you can have a planeswalker and a signature spell so you get to pick one spell as your signature spell and one planeswalker now you don't use legendary creatures you just use a, a planeswalker uh, and a signature spell and then the the differences between you know oathbreaker and commander are besides the planeswalker and signature spell are that the decks are 60 cards not 100 it, again, it's still a singleton format, and then um, uh, life totals are 20. So, you know, aggressive decks like Elves, you know, they really have a chance in Oathbreaker because, you know, with everyone at 20 life, it's pretty easy, you know? It's pretty easy to take them down to zero. So today we're going to be building with Dana one of her favorite uh, Planeswalker Oathbreaker decks. And what's that, Dana? Um, Nissa Voice of Zendikar. Yeah, so we're going to be using Nissa Voice of Zendikar. This is the Oathbreaker that we've chosen. Now, your favorite Planeswalker is Nissa, right? Yep. Why? Why is Nissa your favorite Planeswalker? Uh, she's my favorite Planeswalker because she was the first monogram Planeswalker I saw in Magic. The first Planeswalker ever I saw was Kiara. Uh-huh. Um, and and you, I just liked her because I also like like elves and and um, she's queen of all the elves. All right, yeah. So that's very cool. Um, and you like you like the mono green because of the elves, right? Rather than the Kiora, which is green blue, uh, which does different things. Yeah, I like queen of all the elves. <laughs> All right. Now, if you if you in the chat want to learn more about Oathbreaker, I will post a link here. This is a link to the ban list. It's a link to all of the uh, philosophy and stuff like that. So you can find out more there. We're not going to go over that in depth. We're going to start building this deck now. So what, what Dana's chosen is Nissa Voice of Zendikar. But somebody in chat said, hey, what about Nissa who shakes the world, right? And that's that's a good Planeswalker. So I think we want to add that to the deck. Right? Yeah. All right. So we're going to jam in Anissa, who uh, shakes the world into the deck. Um, and then we're, we want to add pretty much every Nissa that that makes sense, right? So we already have Oath of Nissa, which gets a creature or planeswalker. And the way this is going to work is we're just going to we're going to start to put stuff in the deck, and we're all going to make suggestions. And then once we have a big, giant, bloated list, we're just going to go down and make cuts and try to make the, the deck synergistic and work. Uh, so we need to put Nissa's Chosen in, which is an elf, because if we're going to put a Nissa that fetches Nissa Chosen, then we need to put the Nissa's Chosen in. Uh, Nissa's Triumph is our 
signature spell, so we don't need to put that in. Uh, Nissa Ravain, which is the one who gets the Nissa's Chosen, and it's also got this really great ability here, search your library for any number of elf creatures and put them onto the battlefield. So what are some elf creatures that we can add, Dana? Um, there's Arbor Elf. Okay. Arbor Elf, let's add that. What else? There's Boreal Druid. Boreal Druid, that's the snow elf, right? Yeah, that adds a snow. No, yeah, well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't add a snow. I'm sorry. It's a snow creature, but it does not add a snow mana. It technically does, because any any um thing that comes from um something that's snow is a snow of that thing. So if a snow land tapped for mana, it's a snow mana. Oh wow! Yep. Usually, usually you'll see a little snowflake if it adds snow mana. That's usually the uh, the indicator. No, that's only if you need snow mana um to cast something yeah that's true that's true what other elves do you think we should add elvish mystic these these all these elves are great because they let you cast your nissa on turn two which is awesome we yeah. gotta add lana war elves right yeah definitely lana elves. that's the, that's the old elves. school and finhorn too <laughs> So now you play elves in Legacy, right? In Modern. Modern, Modern, that's right. Sorry. And Legacy. Both. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so we got the Finhorn in there. What else should we put? Essence Warden. Oh, wow. Gaining some life. Now, uh, come on. Sometimes I misspell things, so... You, not to be patient. <laughs> I'm really bad at spelling. Uh, I have a little uh, thing that when I type stuff out, it corrects it for me. So Essence Warden, every time another creature comes into play, not only your creatures, but everyone's creatures, you get a life. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if we can find some synergy for that later. Let's keep going down the list of elves. Heritage Druid. Oh, man, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Let's see. Heritage Druid. Did I spell it wrong again? <laughs> Got it! Alright. Alright, so Heritage Druid, you could tap three untapped elves to add three mana. That's great. Uh, because some elves won't tap for mana. All the ones we've added so far do. But something like, let's do Elvish Visionary, right? And Draga Warcaller. Alright, so yeah, Elvish Visionary doesn't tap for mana. I don't think, uh, does Warcaller tap for mana? I don't think so. No, I think that one pumps them up. Yeah, that one's a pump, pumping elf. And we have some suggestions from chat from Gavin Lee 999. All right, let's hear them. Want to hear those? Priest of Titania. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we got got to have that. And why would Symbiote maybe? But that's not technically an elf. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But, but oh. Gavin Lee suggests why would Channeler. Oh. And Elvish Archdruid. Oh, Elvish Archdruid, definitely. Is Dana dropping the MTG Finance knowledge? <laughs> Do you have a lot of knowledge about MTG Finance, Dana? Uh, check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there's one elf that everybody should buy right now, what is the elf? What 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 elf should everyone buy before it goes up in price? Um, Elfish Archdruid or and or Zuri Renegade Leader. Okay, so those are your hot picks. For those of you who are here for the Magic Finance, Elvish Archdru or Azuri Renegade Leader, get them before they get hot. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't forget, Dana, we were talking about Azuri. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's add that one to the mix, right? Yep, Azuri Renegade Leader. Let's add one Azuri. And I just want to make a note about the deck building. Okay, we're going to keep filling this out. Looks like we got a lot of elves so far. Things are getting a little bit crazy but elfy. I <laughs> get a little bit elfy <laughs> that's funny elfy. uh so what we did is we I'm added an elf who's taking a selfie <laughs> <laughs> is that is that one of the jokes you use at the magic fest that you visit that's a pretty good joke 
I think it's refined. Okay, so now we have some we have some spiky suggestions in here. Okay, let's let's talk about these spiky suggestions. Uh, Gavin Lee says, also Umbra Mantle and Staff of Domination. If you want to make infinite mana, ooh, do we want to make infinite mana? Yeah, because especially if we have Azari Renegade Leader, if we get Azari, Ren Azari Renegade Leader, um, and have infinite mana, our elves will be huge, and then we can attack and kill everyone. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna add these. We we'll we'll see if we're gonna stick around. But one of the questions there's a big topic in Commander right now about you know uh, what's fun for you and what's fun for other people and about spikiness basically. Should you build a Commander deck that's super spiky or not? Now we're not talking about Commander today. We're talking about Oathbreaker. And that question is asked in Oathbreaker too. You know, can you be spiky in Oathbreaker, or is it kind of frowned upon like it is in Commander sometimes? And what I'll say is my experience has been that spiky is fine in Oathbreaker because games are not very long in Oathbreaker because everyone's at 20 life. And so, like, you know, the games are pretty short. You have high interactivity, a lot of push pushback, you know, and somebody tries to win, someone does win. And then you, you play another game. So, you know, I think I think spikiness is totally fine in Oathbreaker. And, you know, some of the stuff that, when Oathbreaker came out, some of the stuff that was uh, being talked about was things like Narset and Windfall, which is a mean combo, you know, but people are like, hey, this great Oathbreaker deck, or Gideon and Armageddon. I mean, if you played that kind of stuff in, in Commander, maybe some groups would not be so happy about that. <laughs> and no, no, no shade to those groups. Everybody has the right to have the fun that they want to have so but i'm just saying in oathbreaker there's not that same stigma i don't think so staff of domination will be added and we will dominate people with said staff okay let's get back to do we want to add more elves or, or is there still some yeah. elves? yeah Lanawar mentor Lanawar, what is that <laughs> i never I, I don't know that one let's see Oh, this is a shapeshifter where you discard and you make a Lanawar Elf. Alright. Yeah. I'll add one. I'll add one. Okay. Anything else? Oh, let me... Metal let, Sentinel. Oh, okay. Alright, that's a good one. Let me suggest a couple. I, I and wanna, Quirion Ranger. I want to get in on this Elf suggestions. Quirion Ranger is awesome. Let's add that before I start to add some stuff. I want to add now that we're adding lots of small elves, okay? So um, we're adding a bunch of small elves, and this is really great with our Oathbreaker because our Oathbreaker puts counters on our elves. So if we go down here and look at Nissa, uh, put a so one-one counter. You want a bunch of tiny elves and go wide, that is, and a bunch of elves that are cheap. So then, if we go wide, we can put a bunch of counters on stuff and make them huge. Right. Okay. But there are some chunky elves that I think we should add because they're just too good in Oathbreaker. Okay, you want to see the chunky ones that I suggest? It's another Lana War, but this one is Lana the War Tribe. Tribe. Lana War Tribe. Yeah, that's right. The Tribe is so good because you play it maybe even on turn two, and then it makes three mana. Plus, it's a three-three. This alone can cast your Oathbreaker. Just the tribe by itself. So I like the tribe. And the other chunky elf I really Maybe like. Maybe Evolution Sage. Oh, yeah. We definitely got to add Evolution Sage. All right. Evolution Sage. We're making really great progress. And then uh, the other one that I want to suggest is uh, Steel Leaf. Champion. Yeah. This, this is a 5-4 for 3 mana. On turn 2, you can have a 5-4. That cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So this thing smashes. This thing is, is, a, is the real deal. Okay. So we got those in there. What else? Um, Farhaven Elf. Hmm. Okay. Farhaven Elf. That's a great suggestion. And I want to do someone of similar suggestion there. Uh, Farhaven... I would like uh, elf, uh, wood elves. Yep. Yeah, wood elves is a great one. I think we're making great progress. This is awesome. Okay, 
Uh, let's see. Let's see how our curve looks. We don't have a lot of two drop elves. Are there any two drop elves that you can think of that would be? Well, we have a bunch of one drops that make mana, and then a bunch of three drops. <laughs> All right. Um, we uh, have Sky Shroud Ranger. Sky Shroud Ranger. Yeah. Let's see what this person does. Oh yeah. Ranger, oh, this is, you could tap a pill. Shroud Ranger also goes well with the signature spell. Yeah, because we're going to be, don't, let's not forget, we're going to refine the signature spell once we get our elves kind of picked out, because the signature spell gets two uh, basic forest cards, but if you control a Nissa Planeswalker, instead you can get up to three land cards. So any lands, okay? And... Does this put any land in play? The Sky Shroud? Uh, let's see. Yeah, put put a land from your hand into play. So it doesn't have to be a basic. It could be any land. So one thing we've so done... So you can get Tron with um, Nissa's Triumph if we want to put Tron in the deck. And then we can get Tron with Nissa's Triumph and then put them into play. Go put them into play. Put them into play. I have seven land in now. Do you want to play it with Tron? That sounds pretty. That sounds Why like a not? cool. It sounds like a cool combo. What does Chad think? What, what do you think? Do you think we should play with Tron? That seems pretty cool. Yeah. If we do play with Tron, though, we have to figure out ways to use the mana. Right. We need some 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 big mana sinks. How mm. about how about some search spells like um, the new finale? What was that finale of devastation? Yeah. Because we're already going to have mana. Even if we don't put Tron in, we can put this Finale of Devastation. And when you search for a creature, if you pay 10 or more into it, all your creatures get plus, plus 10, plus 10, and gain haste. That seems crazy. Let's add that. Yeah. Um, a lot of elf decks have a Crater Hoof Behemoth. You might be familiar with that from playing yeah. modern elves. <laughs> no, it plays. I play it in legacy now. Elves, not modern. Oh, legacy. Okay, so you play crater hoof, right? Yep. Do you want a crater hoof in this deck? Yeah, because we're going wide. So go crater hoof behemoth. Sorry, you're dead. Oof, oof. <laughs> hoof, hoof. There it is. Hoofy. Uh, really appreciate everyone who, who's Hoofy. watching. Uh, feel free to, you know, add in your thoughts, you know. Um, uh, what we've done here with the signature spells, we have not started to do the lands yet. We put in uh, 21 forest, okay? And these forests are going to be exchanged for lands. Not all the forests, but we're going to add some other lands. Like we might add, you know, um, Tron, like we talked about. Or maybe we're going to add a proliferate land, like Karn's Bastion. Yep. Right? Do you like Karn's yeah, Bastion? That is. All right, we'll, we'll put a Karn's Bastion. And the reason why is it, it gives our Planeswalker uh, a loyalty and it will put the another plus one counter on everything with a plus one counter. Okay, what else What else did you have in mind? We Dwine still... and the Leap. Which one? Dwine and the Leap. Oh, man, I don't know what that is. I don't think I've heard that. It's in Modern Elves. Go wide, Elf. Go wide. Two mana, two, two. It's when it enters the battlefield, if you control another elf, create a one, one elf. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Dwinin's Elite. Which, what's it called? Dwinin's Elite. Oh, man. I don't know how to spell it. Elite. I'll just put Elite. D, D, W, Y, E. I, I found it. I found it. We got there. I had a moment of panic because I couldn't spell Dwinans, but uh, we got there. Um, Isperia Supreme Kitty suggests Regal Force. Uh, that's great. It's a, a way to refill your hand. Do you want to do that? I'm not familiar with that card. You don't like that card? No, I'm not familiar with it. I don't know what it does. Oh, okay. Let, let's show you. Regal Force is how the elf decks used to get cards back in the day. Uh, what it does is it's a seven, it's a seven mana five five. When Regal Force enters the battlefield, draw a card for each green creature you control. Yeah, let's play it. Yeah. 
Why not? All right, so Regal Force is in the deck. Um, you know what? I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous because we're going to go wide, but what happens if somebody just rasps the board? Then we... What happens? Because the Regal Force got me thinking, you're going to draw a bunch of cards, but what if you don't have elves? So maybe we should run something like um, Heroic Intervention? Sure. Yeah. Uh, heroic Intervention? Where you at? I probably a lot of heroic stuff. All right, Heroic Intervention is one in a green for an instant. Permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible. So I'd like to add one of those. And then there's a couple more effects like that. Something like... Um, Let's see. This is not always effective, but this can work. Uh, let's see. It is regenerate all the creatures that you control. Uh, I think it's something of vigor. Let's see. Uh, something of vigor. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, regenerate. Each, you know, the, the brain gets a little bit dusty sometimes. Wrap in Vigor. It was, oh, it was not of Vigor, it was in Vigor. See, regenerate each creature you control. So if they blow up the board, you can use this to regenerate all your elves. Sure, yeah. Okay, we'll add this as well. And some of this stuff, you know, you're going to play with the deck and maybe you don't like it and you can remove it. Yeah, we do have Azuri. We have Azuri, it's right here. Um, yeah. Then um, Spurious Supreme Kitty asks, uh, suggests regrowth effects and asks if Skull Clamp is legal. Skull Clamp is definitely legal. Ooh. Do you know that one? Yeah. <laughs> Land Spice Skull <laughs> Okay. We'll add a Skull Clamp. Oh, man. The hardest part of this stream, I think, is going to be the cuts. <laughs> I can already tell you right now, we have some great cards in here, and I'm already feeling like the crunch to cut, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to cut anything. All right. Regrowth effects. Uh, Geyer Engineer. Uh, Geyer Sage. Sorry, Geyer Sage. Geyer Sage? Okay. Yeah. We'll add the Geyer Sage. It does have counters, right? Because it evolves. I kind of like that, because we have that counter theme a little bit. What about the one who puts two counters on elves? What's his name? Uh, Rash, Rashmi or Rashki or something like that? Rishkar. Um, Rishkar. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. And also, Paul and Bright Drip. Paul and Plus One Plus One count on a creature or Paul and Bright. And it's an elf. It's Paul and Bright Drip? Yep. From more this way. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. I will add it. Um, what else do we want to do here? Paul and Bright drew it. Uh, okay, let's start thinking. Maybe we come back to the elves in a, in a second, but maybe we should. Oh, regrow effect. I don't leave Imperius is perfect out. <laughs> I don't. I have a feeling that one's not going to get cut. Let's add the Imperius perfect. I think that one has to stay in. Also, I love having three mana. No Elvis champion. No Elvis. Oh, man. I think, there, I think there's enough Elf Lords to fill a whole deck with them, though. You know? <laughs> Let, let's be honest. Like, I think elf there's... Lord. Elf Lord. Hi. I'll play an Elf Lord. Then another Elf Lord. Then another Elf Lord. Then another one. <laughs> All right. So we need an Elvish champion. Where are you at? Uh, let's narrow, narrow the field. Oh, sorry. I uh, there's a lot of comments. I got to mix up. Uh, Brother fifty two suggested the uh, regrowth effects. Okay. Oh, regrowth. How about this one? This is a regrowth effect that does not get a lot of love. Um, let me see if I could find it. Uh, creature type. It's like an elemental grave sifter. Here it is. Grave Sifter is a six mana elemental and it says when it enters the battlefield each player chooses a creature type and returns any number of card of that type to his or her hand. 
So like, yeah. if all of your elves are in the graveyard, you could just put this in play and name elves and then get them all back. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, right? Um, oh, what about, oh, I'm blanking on the name. The it, three mana. Eternal Witness? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's the classic. Eternal Witness. Um, okay, so we want to add an Eternal Witness. And Eternal Witness is actually really great with a Court of Calling. Because you can Court of Calling for Eternal Witness. And then when it comes into play, you can get the Court of Calling back. And then just, you know, do it again. It's just like a little value play to like get an extra mana out of it. <laughs> An eternal witness versus out. And then um, Brother52 also says that uh, Rishkar might be a bit redundant because most of the elves already tapped for green. This is true, but let's first... The elves that don't. <laughs> let's add a bunch of stuff no, first and then cut for different reasons. So like, I, I don't know if it will last because of that reason. A lot of stuff already taps for, for green. Um, and so maybe we will cut that. also makes all your elves bigger. That's true. It does give you a, a, kind of a bigger force. Um, and what about Marwyn? Uh-oh. We forgot an elf lord. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a lord though, right? It, it, no. it, well, I guess it doesn't pump other elves, right? No. It no. just pumps uh, other it, elves. Is it? Yeah, it's an elf synergy. What about part. incubation? As a incubation druid, that's another thing to add. I do like incubation druid because of counters. You're right. Everyone's right. That's not an elf lord. It's it's an elf synergy card. I'm sorry. Let's see. Add one of those to the deck. Let's work on the lands a little bit. What lands do we want? Let's. Urza's tower. Urza's power plant. Urza's mine. All right. Let's put in Tron. <laughs> I love this. This is great. There's the cost of doing this is not really that much, really, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Remove this. There we go. And then, uh, so we got Power Plant, Mine, and Tower. Uh, what else do we want? Do we want... Man of War Reborn. Okay, that's a good one. That one adds a counter when something comes into play. Um, you and Gaius Cradle. Okay. <laughs> Gaius Cradle. If we're going to go spiky, we need to go full spike here. So let's add the Cradle. Cradle's very nice. And Orin Reef Vastwood. Uh, Orin Reef. Vastwood. Unreef, the no, Vastwood, sorry. There we go. That one gives everything that came into play a plus one, plus one counter. Um, every creature, I think. Yeah, every green creature, sorry. Uh, let's see, Unreef, Vastwood. Uh, do we want, like, a like something to interact with our opponent's land? Like, a strip mine or a, you know... Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I Pendle Haven. Pendle Haven. Pendle Haven. That's a great one. Yeah, it's funny to, to hear her sensibilities. You know, Dana's sensibilities are, no, I'm going to kill them. I don't want to mess with their lands. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gavin leaves back and asks if we've uh, added Eladomri or Summoner's back. Um... Eladomri. I don't know what Eladomri is. Let's find out. Oh, that one's to give Shroud, right? Your elves cannot be the targets of spells or abilities. And your elves gain Forest Walk. I like that. Yeah. Oh, you know what we need? I'll tell you what we need. Hold on one second. Uh, remove from the sideboard. Sorry, put that in the sideboard. We need uh, the thing that turns one of your, your opponent's permanents into a forest. Uh, Song of the Dryad Because if all your elves have forest walk and they're not playing forest if you song of the dryad their their oathbreaker uh, Their oathbreaker just becomes a forest So they can't and it's not a planeswalker anymore and you can attack they can't block because now they have a forest Yeah, yeah, that seems cool 
All right, let's go back to lands. What we lands? We need snow covered forest. Oh, we do need snow covered forest. What was I doing? I was putting regular forest in. I should have known better. I should have known better. All right. And wirewood lines. We need we need uh, foil snow covered forest. <laughs> you got that right, Adam. You're gonna take care of buying all those foil uh, forests. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the foil. <laughs> we got the regular. Na 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 na, buy them for me. <laughs> Happy birthday, cousin! Oh, yeah, you already had your birthday. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's remove these from the main deck. So we're getting our snow covered on. I'm just removing these. Keep the suggestions coming. Y'all are doing great. Wirewood Lodge. Uh, let's see. Wirewood Lodge. Let's do that while I'm thinking about it. Well, okay. Uh, so Spurious Supreme Kitty said Rolf Mana. Uh, Rolfful Mana. Moonshadow said Rafellos. I don't know if that's talking about the same thing. I know of Rafellos. Okay. Maybe Wolfful Man is the nickname for Rafellos. Maybe. Yeah. That sounds like that sounds like a good nickname for Rafellos. <laughs> Alright, so do we have one of these in the main deck already? Let's see. No, we don't. Okay, and then remove this from the sideboard. I'm making a mess of our deck list here. Okay. And I want to save this so far. Uh, save. Okay, so we got it saved so far. So the, there was one stream where we were building a deck, and I deleted it mid midstream. I like oh. I hit like plus over here, which made a new deck list, and the old one was gone. So that's why I like to save it in the middle, cause that would be heartbreaking <laughs> after all this work. Uh, uh, I would be fine. Firewood lodge. I got the wirewood lodge that's in there. Uh, um, Colony Garden. Oh, that makes a token, right? Plant. And yeah. this one makes plants. Plants all the time. All the plants. Plants all the time. I like that because it does make a plant, and then um, when you pl play Nissa, the plant becomes something that can swing, which is great. Yeah. Now, what about, like, Avenger of Zendikar? That makes a lot of plants. Yeah. Does it sound Avenging good? Zendikar. It's avenging Nissa versus Zendikar for people punching their <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll add that. We're going to add the Avenger. And I feel like we should add, since we have these big ones and we have all this mana from the Tron lands and the Gaius Cradle and stuff, I feel like we should also add Green Sun Zenith. Do you yeah. agree? So Dana, Spiria Spring Kitty says that this girl has expensive land tastes. Guy <laughs> <laughs> uh, cradle, foil snow covered. Yeah. No, no, that was your idea. My idea was regular snow covered. That was my idea. I'll take responsibility. Sure, actually. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, but you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I want my. I think I've made my tendencies a little bit clear too there. Let's see. Uh, Green Sun Zenith. Um, and then someone mentioned Summoner's Pact. Now, I would be quicker to add something like um, the elf that Survival of the Fittest over a Summoner's Pact. What's the elf that um, that you discard a, a creature and go get something? Um, search your library. Let's see. Search your library for a creature. Oh, maybe it's Fauna Shaman. Yeah, that's what it is. Fauna Shaman. I would rather my add dad, a... Daddy, get in here. You, did you get that one, Adam? That was you. That's, that's my guess, yeah. <laughs> it was a Fauna Shaman. I would rather add that if we want a tutor than... Because uh, it's actually an elf, you know, than like uh, something else. The only reason I like the Green Sun Zenith and the other stuff is because we have so much mana we can just go get something to the battlefield, you know? Like a crater hoof behemoth or something like that. Man, how many pollen bright bright druids did I add here? Let's see. Remove one. <laughs> All right. Three. No, you only need one. This is a singleton format, everybody. Okay, so one single. Pollen. All right, so we still let's remove one of these from the main deck. I I gotta remove some of these snow covers because we're we're getting down to okay. So that's twenty two lands. That'll be. 21 right there 
Um, what other lands do we want? Uh, is there any other green land? Now, we don't want to, like, not have forests, so at some point we gotta Tranquil be careful. Tranquil Thicket? Tranquil Thicket? Uh, we can add it, but I think we'll probably end up cutting it, because we have so little lands that chances that you have it, that you're gonna want to cycle it, are very low, in my opinion. Four, and then nine forests. Nine? Maybe you want nine forests? So then that means we need three more lands if you want only nine forests. Let's see. Um, this very Supreme Kitty asks what the signature spell for the deck is. Oh, the signature spell it's is Mrs. Triumph. <laughs> so that's why we're kind of focusing on land packages because we can get any land with Mrs. Triumph. So. I don't know if there's other lands that we really Nine want. Three snow-covered forests, what are you thinking? So he has 12 total, so it's the same thing. All right. Um, Dana's Twitter. Let me put that in there. Sorry. Uh, actually, let me see if I can mod. I, I messaged it, too, by the way. Okay. I'm going to mod you anyways. so that um, We're going to mod Adam, Dana's dad. All right, so now you have a sword, but I'm going to put this in chat for everyone who's watching. And then um, everyone who's watching on YouTube, you'll have all these links in the descriptions. So you can check that out there. All right, so uh, everything's good there. You should be able to post links now. Um, let's take a look at the deck list. I think if we think of a land... Okay, chat, if you think of a land, uh, go ahead and, and shoot it out there. And then we will... Uh, probably add it. So now we have to talk about cuts because right now we have 71 cards in the main deck and Ooh. we need to be down to 58. So... But there's more cards to add. Oh man, this is the hard part. List Alana Huntmaster. When you play an elf, make another elf. Do you want that? Yeah. We, we can add it. We're going to have to cut something for it, but it can be added. All right, so we got that in there. Let and me know. And then what about ambush? We know, because we won't have that many. I was thinking ambush commander, but then we won't have, we actually don't have that uh, many forests. Yeah, forest. we we are cutting down our forests, so that's another reason why Rafellos might not mm -hmm. be as good in this, because we, it kind of, there's some tension, because we want different lands, because we can get different lands, but then we it, with Rafaelos we would want forest, you know. So it kind of it kind of pulls in two different directions. Then also vigor. Vigor's pretty cool, yeah. It's not vigor, now, but it's good. It's good, yeah. Vigor says uh, it's a six man a six six. Um, trample. trample, no less. Yeah, with trample, if damage. And if damage would be belt dealt. To another creature, you control, prevent that damage. Put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. Yeah, that goes perfect with the counter thing. Yep. Okay, so what else are we going to add before we start making cuts? Let's see, I'm looking here. Nissa Vastward Seer. Nissa Vastwood Seer. Let's see if I... Did I miss it? Oh, we have that. We already have that one in there. Oh, what about Vivian Reed? So, Gavin Lee 999 asked about Crater of Behemoth, which we did. Yep. Uh, I think we put that in there. Um, he also says doubling season is a must. Yeah. Doubling season. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Doubling season will be added. I mean, we have Tron land, so we have to spend this mana somehow, right? Five drops are a good way to do that. Okay. So we... I think we got... Also Vivian Reed and Vivian the, of the Ark, though. Okay. Vivian Reed... Uh, it gets a creature, blows up a plane, uh, uh, an enchantment, or a creature with flying, or an artifact. I like that. We'll add one of those to the main deck. And then uh, Vivian of the Arc Bow. 
put counters on stuff. Put two plus one plus one counters on each creature. Isn't there a ranger? This one's four mana and it does the same thing. Right? Let's see. Target creature control deals power equal to its... Uh, deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And creatures get plus four, plus four, and trample. This one says... Yeah, this one uh, does it to a creature or planeswalker. And then you can choose a card from outside the game. Okay. This one is better, I think. Even though you can't use the wish ability in Oathbreaker. Because there's no outside the game. But I think the first two abilities are really great. I like doing um, of the arc bow, um the arc bow more than the ranger. Okay. We'll add one copy of the arc bow. It doesn't it, the the cost of it doesn't really matter because we have so many mana elves. So like six mana is not hard to do. It's pretty easy, I think. So <laughs> they don't let us have wish boards. Yeah, that's no wish boards in Commander and or Big Gale Tusker. Put a counter on each other creature you control when it enters the battlefield. Okay. That has been added. And Loyal Guardian. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander slash Oathbreaker, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Okay. Wirewood Lodge is not in the list. I thought I put one in there. Let's see. We talked about it. Yeah, I had one in. Oh, I must have messed it up. Let me put Wirewood Lodge in. Thank you for that. That's a good pointing that out. That's excellent. Okay, and then we'll take one of the forest out. Okay. So here we are. Do we do we have to add anything or are we gonna cut? We gotta cut twenty cards. Reclamation save Oh man, I was gonna say that too. That's that's a, that's an auto include. Yeah, that was that one I, I Man, I was going to say that when I forgot. Okay, a Reclamation Sage is in there. It's a good ad. It's a good catch. And Jackstar Archers. Uh... Jackstar Archers for flying protection. Okay. Okay, so now we have the Jagged Scar Archers. We're going to add that, and then at some point, we have to start cutting. <laughs> We, we have to cut 22 cards right now. I think adding at this point is probably not a good good idea because we have 22 cards we got to cut. That's almost as much as we add it. <laughs> All right, so let's start the cutting process. And if while we're cutting, if you think of something as we're cutting, let's see if we can make room for it. But first thing we should do is we should cut some stuff. I think the first cut is Boreal Druid, because we have yeah. we have a lot of one mana creatures that make mana. This one doesn't make a green mana, so let's remove this from the main deck. Uh, I think we should cut the Essence Warden, because we don't have a lot of life gain synergy. Sure, yeah. Um, remove one from the main deck. And I think there's a better elf if we did want to gain life, which I don't really think we want to do. But there's one that taps, and you gain life for each elf you control. Yeah, well wisher. Well wisher. We we could go with well wisher if we wanted to do that, but. Yeah. All right, so let's keep. So, Gavin Lee uh, says I would cut Tron Land since most of our spells have green pips and low colorless costs. Low colorless costs. So he's saying cut the Tron uh -huh. and have more green reduction. Okay. Uh, I I can see I can. No. See... I could see that I I can see that argument, but by the same token, we have a lot of elves that make green mana, so like you could do something like tap uh you know a Tron land and then play tap two lands like a Tron land and and something to play a perf Imperius perfect and still have other mana untapped you know, or you know um, tap a tower and two green to get a, a a Tusker down, you know. And still have other mana to do things. But I, I do agree. We don't have a lot of colorless cards, which really work well with the Tron cards, you know? Um, so maybe we cut the Tron lands? I don't know. It's up to Dana. 
This is Dana. this is your deck, Dana. Because what? <laughs> and then John, on, on the other John side, Lance. I like John Lance. <laughs> You've been vetoed, sir. <laughs> on the other side of adding more non-green lands, um, Reaper uh, Quebec says play Dark Depths Thespian Stage. Okay. Um, you could get them both. You could get the combo. Right? I think we have to play those as spells, though. So what I think we have to do is go up to 23 lands if we do that. I like the idea. Does Dana like the idea? Yeah. Do you like a 2020 indestructible creature? Yeah. In a format where people's lives are 20? Wait, wait, wait. Like... Do you agree, though? Do you think we should keep them as spells, or do you think we should try to fit them in the mana base? I think we should be getting spells as well. Okay, Dark Depths. That's a great idea. And Thespian Stage. Because with one cast of your signature spell, you can get both of these. Mm -hmm. And then... Gavin Lee says if we're doing that, then we need crop rotation. Oh, we need crop rotation anyways because of Cradle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was like a misplay right there. <laughs> we're supposed to be cutting stuff, chat. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, chat. Come on, chat. All right. I do like those additions, though. Those are great additions. Uh, Reaper nope. Quebec. Suggest expedition map Sylvan Scrying. Yeah, I think we're gonna pass on those because our signature spell gets these lands. So like it will get both lands, in my opinion. But again, look at Dana says no. But Dana does have the right to veto me. Dana can say no, put it in. And then well, no in or no out. No in. Don't put it in. Don't put it in, she says. All right. No, no, no dice on that. But th those are great suggestions for a different style deck, especially one that doesn't have a signature spell that could go and fetch those things. So, into the north, uh, yeah, into the north is a little bit better. But again, Nissa's Triumph does that. You know, like we have access to Nissa's Triumph like all the time as long as Nissa's in play. In Oathbreaker, both are in the command zone, so. You can get, you know, anything. Uh, once the Nissa's in play. Definitely said the Tusker guy seems underwhelming. Okay. A Tusker, uh, Dana seemed pretty excited about Tusker. So what do you think? Should we cut the Tusker? We yeah, need to... we can cut it. Okay. I mean, we're more on the elk thing than the... Oh my gosh, big counters. Boom, boom. <laughs> All right. So we're going to remove uh, the Tusker from the main deck. And then maybe this Rhino, because this Rhino is probably not as good as the Tusker, right? Yeah. The Loyal Guardian is probably not as good as Tusker anyways, and if we're cutting Tusker, then we should probably cut the Rhino. It's also not an elf. Yeah. Okay, that has been no, removed. Not an elf? Get out. Get <laughs> well, get except out for, my eyesight. Except for you, Crater Hoof. You can stay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One one question I had actually, Jonathan, in Oathbreaker, yeah. so multiplayer is something like Creator of Behemoth as good because you know you're looking to have multiple opponents, so it doesn't have the kind of one shot end the game quite as much. Although potentially you could kill multiple people and you could kill the problem person, but yeah, a Creator of Behemoth is awesome in Oathbreaker um, because you don't have to swing as many creatures at somebody. You know, in Commander they're forty life, so. You might have to send your whole team and and a, and a crater hoof just to end it, right? Uh, the other oh, day, multiplayer was not as bad as commander because the life difference is nice. Right, it's twenty life. And the other day, like I no doubt with the I have a Veraska elf deck in Oathbreaker, and I think I killed them on turn three or four with a with a devastation and uh, and a crater hoof, and it was just it was really absurd because they were playing elves. So my um, my uh, elf that taps for mana for every elf that's in play, I'll tap for more mana. And then I had Wirewood Lodge on the board. So then I untapped it. I made like 18 mana on like turn four. And then, oh. 
yeah, it was gross. So yeah, you could kill people with crater hoof, like no no problem. You know, it's very. So the idea is just kill multiple people at once, even. Yeah, yeah, no, we I killed the whole table on turn four. So yeah, it's I was just really good nose breaker because you are a mean person. <laughs> hey, this is a commander, okay? I was I was allowed to do it, and they didn't call me a bad person for it. <laughs> we just shuffled up and played another game, you know, and, and somebody else won that game, and they had a great time. <laughs> All right, so. Let's let's take a hard look. We got to still cut. Uh, looks like about twenty one cards. So we got to start. Let's just let's just go down the list. Nissa Vastwood Seer. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Hey. All right, thumbs up. Arbor Elf. We got to keep the Arbor Elf. Thumbs down. All right. Yeah, don't have that many forests. So don't yeah, yeah, have yeah. Let's force. let's cut it. Let's cut it. Remove it. Boom. Elvish Mystic. So, uh, we'll, we'll probably get to it, but Gavin Lee says Nettle Sentinel feels generic because Elves should focus on generating mana or being a win con or a combo piece. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there soon. But it that. combos with Heritage Druid. It does. That it does. All right, Finhorn Elves. We keeping that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Heritage Druid. Definitely. Don't even <laughs> think about cutting that card. I wasn't even thinking about it. It wasn't even. It did not even cross my mind. Jorga Warcaller. Now I can't say the same for this one. <laughs> nah. It's a lord. Or it's a lord. So. Okay. Thumbs up. All right. We can't cut Lannowar else. We would have to question our life choices. Uh, Lannowar Mentor, though. I will kill you. Okay, we're keeping the Land of War Mentor. Let's move on. Yeah. Nettle Sentinel, here's the here's the controversial topic of the day. Keep or remove? Thumbs. Let's remove it. <laughs> it it's kind of iffy, but we're going to remove it. Because we do have to cut 20 cards. So, you know. More Sky, than that. Yeah, well, we're getting close. Sky Shroud uh, Ranger. Curian Ranger you skipped over. Oh, well, yeah, we're not cutting that. <laughs> never. <laughs> we'll never cut that. <laughs> I'm just keeping track. <laughs> would we cut the Carrion Ranger? That's up to Dana, but I would... No, I'm, I'm just saying you skipped it. I didn't say to cut it. Okay, I would strenuously <laughs> object. <laughs> Don't never cut it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sky Shroud Sky Ranger. Sky Ranger, on the other hand. Uh, I, I would have cut this like five minutes ago. But then when we started talking about Dark Depths and, you know, um, the other land, I like that one of the lands can be in play. You could play one for the turn and then tap this and then play the second one and then combo. But I don't know. If you have to do a sorcery speed, I think we can remove it. Now, let's get it out. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. What about, uh, I'm just going to call it Dwayne's. Dwayne's Elite. <laughs> Dwayne's. Dwayne's really uh, Elite. What do you think? Keep it. Eldra, uh, Eldram Domri, Lord of Leaves. This gives your elves forest walk and shroud. This is weird. Okay, there's two things we have to think about with this when we're cutting it. First thing is... Is it, it an elf? It is an elf. It's an elf lord. Now, here's the thing, though. You can't, if this is in play, you can't staff a domination for infinite mana. Because you can't target your creature. Okay? Okay, yeah, let's cut it. Uh, the only other thing, though, is it does play well with that removal spell that I showed you earlier. But I think it's cuttable. I think we can cut it. Because we have other stuff that give our elves forest walk. So, remove from the main deck. Alright, so we're on Elvish Visionary right now. Do you want to keep Elvish Vision? Uh, Thumbs up. Okay. Fauna Shaman. Thumbs down. This is fun. This is like a game show. You are the weakest link, Fauna Shaman. Get out. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, right now, Gyre Sage. Thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, room from the main deck. Uh, incubation Druid. Thumbs down. 
Dana likes know. Dana likes her mana elves to be one mana. The two mana stuff. Yeah, All right, Elvin uh, Nis Nissa's chosen. We gotta keep it. Yeah, Pollen Bright Druid. Keep it. Priest of Titania. I have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Elvish Arch Druid. Oh, come on, we can keep that. Elvish Champion. Keep it. All right, Eternal Witness. Thumbs down. Not an elf. Get out. All right, uh, Evolution Sage, which is an elf. Keep it. All right, cool. You know what I thought too? We don't have a lot of fetch lands, which would be really great with Evolution Sage. So it's something to think about. Yeah, but we're not as big on the counters theme. Yeah, that's true. And just playing one land is a nice bump with it. Okay, uh, Izuri, we got to keep that, right? Thumbs up. Fairhaven Elf. Thumbs down. See you later, Fairhaven Elf. Uh, Imperious, well, we're not going to ask about that one. Imperious Perfect, we're going to move <laughs> right past that. Uh, Jagged Scarred Archers. Thumbs up. Land of War Tribe. Yes! The Land of War Tribe made it. All right, Marwin the Nurturer. Thumbs up, okay. Uh, Reclamation Sage. Yeah, I think we got to keep it as kind of protection. Rishkar. Thumbs down. See you later, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Steel Leaf Champion. One, one, one thing I will say with Rishkar, though, just uh -huh. as a consideration, um... It does mean, though, that even plants with plus one, plus one counters could generate mana. That's true. If you play a big... Uh, to, yeah. to everything. Um, doesn't mean to keep it or not, but yeah. it, it synergizes with Nissa. Okay. You like it? I know. <laughs> no. No. Thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> Steel Leaf Champion is done. Thumbs down. Bye-bye, Steel Leaf Champion. I tried, to, I tried to get you in there, buddy. You didn't, you didn't pass. Okay. Wood Elves. It doesn't know what our deck wants to do. What else? Time to play untapped. Yeah, untapped. All right. What else you could stay? Uh, Beast Whisperer. This you, you like this card, right? Yeah, draws cards. Um, Lisana, Lisalana, Huntmaster. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Grave Sifter. Thumbs down. We don't. We're, we don't care about getting elves back. We will just crush people with elves. Okay, vigor. All right. <laughs> this is this is funny because like I don't know what she's gonna choose. You know, I'm like, oh, is it gonna be? Is she gonna keep it? Or is she not gonna keep it? It's like it is funny. Okay, a a Avenger of Zendikar. Okay, what does it do? With that? Play some encounters. All right, all right. Regal Force. This is the one that draws cards for each green creature you have in play. Thumbs down. No Regal Force. Remove one from the main deck. Boom. Okay. Crater Hoof Behemoth. You know. I think he gets a pass. Yeah. Crop Rotation. Thumbs down. Wow. Can I talk you out of that? <laughs> oh, he must have talked you out of that one. Can dude. I talk you out of that one? It gets you cradle. It gets you cradle. That's all. Nope. nope. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> all right, Green Sun Zenith. Uh, to be fair, her signature spell does, too. That's true. That's true. What's it going to be? All right. Plus uh, two thumbs up. All right. Oath of Nyssa. <laughs> thumbs down on Oath of Nyssa. All right. So remove one from the main deck. Skull Clamp. It's pretty good. No. Oh, thumbs up. Okay. Wow. This is a roller coaster. All right. Uh, finale of Devastation. <laughs> Th 
thumbs down. Oh man, I think you. Let me let what? me let me push back. I think if you're gonna keep one of these, it should be Finale over Green Sun. That's my opinion. Because Finale, any elf could be a threat. Because it pumps them all. It, any elf could be a crater hoof with a finale. Okay. Then Green Sun Zenith. Bye bye, Green Sun. Okay, all right. So we're going to remove the Green Sun from the main deck. Uh, all right. Heroic Intervention. <laughs> Gavin Lee is uh, upset about saying goodbye to crop rotation. <laughs> <laughs> me too, Gavin. Me too. <laughs> but I tried. If the signature spell grabs any land, it's okay. It does. It does. And, and that's that's the truth. And I, I tried. But, you know, Dana is the boss. So, uh, you know. So Heroic Intervention. Thumbs up on Heroic. All right. Um... Let's see. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring the screen over here so I can see what you're doing well. Because I keep looking to the side. Spring kitty was scared there for a second. What's that? Spurious spring kitty says they were scared there for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rapid vigor. What is it doing? This regenerates each creature you control. So if there's a board wipe, you would regenerate. Now I I think we could cut it because, you know, a lot of board wipes don't don't really deal like if you get toxic deluge you can't wrap in vigor i already said thumbs down okay all right i'm just saying it for the audience as well you know just so that if they're thinking of wrap and vigor for their own deck okay song of the dryads we've got elvis champion yes all right staff of domination oh do domin yeah it's domination right i thought it's dominion okay staff of domination this is the thing that makes infinite mana. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to infinite mana. Okay. Um, Umbra Mantle, same thing, makes infinite mana as long as you can make... Thumbs down. Nissa Ravane. Thumbs up. Doubling Season. Doubling season. Thumbs up. Nissa who shakes the world. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, definitely thumbs up on that. Nick's got one more card. No, I think there's... Well, what's the sideboard? The sideboard is our two spells. So the sideboard oh. will be Nissa's Triumph and uh, Voices in the Guard. That's why we have to get to 58, because each, each, each deck is 60 cards, including your signature spell and your Oathbreaker. And then the other thing to remember is this is why we're only running 21 lands is because your deck is actually 58 cards in, that you're drawing from. So you can cut back on lands a little bit. Like in a 60 card deck, you want like 24. But this one, we have elves and our deck is smaller. So that's why we're on 21. But we're at 23 lands because we use two as spells. So let's finish up. We have Vivian to vote on. Does Vivian get the thumbs up? All right, and then we have another Vivian of the Art Bow. Thumbs up on that. And then we have Lands, which here's the thing. Okay, we're at 61 cards. You did a great job, Dana, by the way. Uh, it was a hard task to cut a bunch of stuff. It's bloody. It's all bloody in here. So many things have, have died. Actually, Art Bow. Thumbs down on Art Bow. All right, all right. We're going to cut and the Gavin Lee suggests... Um... Cutting, uh, saying cut land since a lot of the you have a lot of mana dudes, uh -huh. and also cutting uh, county garden because just getting a sapperling isn't all that exciting. It's a plant, or I think it's a not... plant though, actually, but yeah, yeah. The, okay, so let's talk about that. I'm going to remove the arc bow because it's already got the I got the the nod to remove it. Okay, we're within two cuts of having a full deck. Let's talk about this uh, this land situation. The first thing is the colony garden makes a plant token. But the Nissa pumps the plant token. So, like, it's just, like, free value. Let's say you play the Nissa and you haven't dropped no, your land I want to cut Colony Garden. Okay, Colony Garden's cut, then. Remove from the main deck. One, one, one thing I'll just throw out there is it might be yeah. good to kind of count the number of lands that make a green mana on turn one. Okay. That can be maybe a consideration. Okay, let's take a look. So, Pendlehaven? we have 11, 11 uh, forests, one Pendlehaven, so that's 12. Uh, that comes in play tapped, that comes in play tapped. Wait, are John Lands out? 
No, they're in. I didn't know if you wanted them in or out. Oh yeah, in, in, in. Okay, so we have we have twelve lands that tap. So only uh, a little over half our lands are making mana on turn one, green mana. How do you feel about that? I wanna cut cut some of the. Um, I don't know. Last cut's always the hardest. <laughs> And well, remember, we're also replacing though if you want more land that taps your green on turn one. Right, we could cut something and put a forest in, you know. No, I just think we should go down to 21 land because we've got a lot of ways to make mana and fetch lands. Okay. So, so do you want to cut a forest then? Because then that will put us at 11 sources. That's half your mana base that does not tap for green on turn one. Now I want to cut one that doesn't tap for green. Okay, which one are we going to cut? Karn's Bastion, Red maybe? Red Lodge. Ooh. Okay, um... <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'm not, it's your deck, I won't tell you what to do. Sage. But... Oh, the one that works well with the Dark... Yeah, that's the Dark Death's combo one. It's a hard cut. Uh, if, I like know, cutting Llanowar yeah. Reborn. If it were me, I would cut the Tron lands and replace them with two forest. Yeah. That's what I would Actually, do. Yeah. Okay. Replace them with two fo snow forest. Okay, so remove one of these and then the other one and the other one. And then we'll add two forest. Add one, add one. And add then... your snow forest. Snow forest, of course. Snow covered forest. Foil. Foil snow covered forest. So now we have 21 lands. Um, and we have an Oathbreaker deck. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like it. I like it a lot. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. We did it. We did it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, what, yeah. what we're going to do is I'm going to add this Oathbreaker deck to uh, MTG Goldfish. So I'll add that up, and it will be uh, shared on Twitter, and it'll be in the YouTube video. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see it in the description. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about about the deck uh, before we end? We start moving to closing up the the cast. No, not really. Okay, so let's see. I still don't have an oath. You got to get on it, Gavin Lee. You got to get on it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we close up the cast, we made our deck. I'm happy about this. Now, uh, Dana recently had a birthday, okay? And uh, as part of this cast, uh, I wanted to gift you something. So your dad has something kind of cool. I think it's cool. And there was two community members who helped out with this as he's getting those. Uh, the first one is the one who did the art. And this is Dio Boss. Here we go. And I'm going to put his Twitter in here. He did the art for what's these these little things. Um, and then also the proxy guy helped us out with these as well. So I'm going to put his Twitter in here too. Should she show the, the, the camera? The... I, I will actually show on the screen what she's looking at. So I had these tokens made. Look at that. And uh, the proxy guy did all the graphic design on them. And then, uh, you know, we got the Gaius Cradle here, the foil uh, cradle. So... You know, <laughs> happy birthday, and uh, I, you can, you. yeah, you can use this with your deck, and I'm glad that, you know, Avenger of Zendikar made it, because now we have some plant tokens to go with it. Rip Colony Garden, but, you know, <laughs> so I hope everyone's had a good time. Uh, can you tell them where they can find you, Dana? So if you want to, uh, you know, follow Dana, she can tell they you. They can find me on my Twitter at Dana Fisher MTG. Okay, I'm gonna put, put that in but the chat. Fisher is spelled F I S C H E R. Okay, so there it is, right there in in in. There's Dana's Twitter, and uh, you can find me on Twitter too. This is my Twitter here, and everything I do is on Twitter. So when I post the you know YouTube video and all that stuff, and if you want to build an Oathbreaker deck like we just did with Dana. What you can do is you can put something in the YouTube comments or you can uh, send me a message on Twitter or uh, tweet at me. So uh, thank you so much, Dana. Thank you, chat, for being here. And thank you, Adam, for making this happen and helping to get it organized and stuff. 
Uh, so we'll see see everybody later. <laughs> oh, look at that hug. <laughs> All right. We're going to close it down. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye.